Once you've generated your statistical baseline forecast, you will be able to view your demand forecast. And this is what you're looking at uh, for your lines for these items. So you'll see here that we have an item, uh, the item number here, and then this is the first month of our forecast. We're forecast to need 1,400 of these on June 1st. And why this has been highlighted is that this number was actually manually changed. Any numbers that are modified, you'll see in bold. If it's not in bold, that indicates that that's something that came from the calculation. So this is where you can tweak and use your knowledge of what's going on to filter it. Uh, from a human standpoint, you may be looking at, you have 15,000 and then 18, 19, 21, 20. This 10,498 seems a little odd, so I would be digging into that to look at where that came from. And they're not in the screenshot here, but you can look at uh, how that, was generated, which algorithm was used to generate that, and look at historical demand uh, that created that number to basically see where it came from. Once you've decided, okay, I'm good with all these numbers, then you would authorize your adjusted demand forecast. And when you authorize, you select which forecast model you want this to be effectively published to. And that's important because when you go to include it in your master plan, you'll select the plan that you're running for your master plan and you have the section for forecast, you choose which forecast model you want to have included in that master plan, which relates back to that previous slide where you've selected uh, which forecast model you're publishing that forecast or authorizing it to. We didn't talk about supply forecast because that's a, a whole different can of worms. But what we're looking at here is including the demand forecast that we've just calculated and generated. And then you have your parameter for the reduction key. I can't see it in the screen, screenshot here, but you would have four options. If you select none for method to reduce your forecast, uh, if you had that same thousand we were talking about earlier for uh, forecast and you had 950 on order, you run the risk or high probability of making or buying 1950 when you actually only need a thousand. So none would be a very dangerous parameter to select here. Uh, the most common options are percentage reduction key, which reduces it by that percentage we talked about earlier, or transactions reduction key. The most common parameter I see used here is transactions reduction key. That uh, does what I was talking about earlier, where it subtracts existing real transactions from your forecast um, at any point in the future so that you're getting the most accurate representation of what you're actually going to be needing in your forecast beyond your existing transactions or orders.